right, gang, let's dive right in here. It's happening. It's ha it really is at the next generation, Gen Z, as we call them, those have been born by 2012, if I recall, they are indeed rebelling. They are rebelling, and they're rebelling not against those who simply want to bring peace on earth. They're rebelling not against those who stand for love, not hate. No. No, these Gen Zers are openly rebelling against what they perceive to be a malicious, despotic, intolerant authoritarianism imposed on them by the most narcissistic, neurotic, and especially radically intolerant people on the planet. That's the rebellion that we're seeing unfolding right before our very eyes. Now, if you don't know what's happening here, students at Marshall Simmons Middle School in Massachusetts, one of the bluest of blue regions in the bluest of blue states in the nation, in Burlington, Massachusetts, these students, these children of Democrats, have risen up in defiance of their radically woke administration and staff, and they've, they've refused to comply with their woke leftist indoctrination. The school had encouraged students to wear rainbow clothing to celebrate pride, encouraged, by the way, which of course is uh, another word for do it or we'll ostracize you, right? So they encouraged, wink, wink, students to wear rainbow clothing. But many students took it upon themselves to organize a counter protest. Instead of donning rainbow colors, these students opted to wear red, white, and blue attire and chanted throughout the school's halls, my pronouns are USA. <laughs> I mean, God bless these students. God, and they triggered, they absolutely triggered these woke so-called educators, better indoctrinators, right? I mean, seriously, God bless them. They have more courage in their pinkies than 98% of our Republican politicians. God bless these guys. Now, of course, woke faculty members were shocked by this sacrilege and openly characterized the students' refusal to comply with the pride festivities as, of course, hateful intolerance. These fundamentalist woke Puritans demanded the scarlet eye be placed around the necks of these heretical students. And of course, parents didn't take too kindly to that. They weren't very happy with a bunch of virtue signaling supposed educators who their tax dollars pay for, by the way. They don't much appreciate these leftist activists disguised as teachers denigrating their kids that way. And so the whole incident has erupted into a culture war, again, within the bluest of blue regions in the nation. Now, Principal Kerry Purchase acknowledged that the counter message from these students may have been triggered by the school's failure to recognize Memorial Day. <laughs> these people, these freaking people, I just beam me up. This school in Burlington deliberately refused to commemorate Memorial Day. Hey gang, up until now, the central bank digital dollar CBDC has been nothing more than a headline. But you may have noticed right now things are developing at a very rapid and very ominous pace. It started with a sweeping executive order from the Biden administration, and now central banks are out there even hiring for their development. Here's the thing, gang. A digital dollar can be used to track your purchases, control what you buy, and even seize or freeze your assets. Just look what they did to the Freedom Convoy protesters. That's why it's absolutely critical you protect your money with precious metals like gold and silver. I've partnered with the top-rated precious metals company, Gold Co., because they're a great company with an amazing reputation. Right now, they're giving you up to $10,000 in free silver while supplies last if you open up an account with them. And to make it even sweeter, gang, all qualified callers this week will receive a free Ronald Reagan silver coin. But that's a limited time offer, so don't wait. And definitely don't wait until all your money is under Biden's control. Click on that link below right now to learn how you can get started today. I mean, you know, 
Pat Buchanan warned us about this back in 1990. So, well, 92 and 96, but, but uh, particularly in 96, he had a wonderful line during his presidential campaign. For these people, Easter is out, Earth Day is in, where we worship dirt. <laughs> right? we've, gone, we've gone from celebrating the resurrection to worshiping dirt. Okay, so Easter is out, Earth Day is in, Columbus Day is out, Indigenous Peoples Day is in. Pat, more than anyone else, understood the true nature of the culture wars emerging in the early 90s. He recognized it was all about recalibrating the whole of civilizational life around secular Marxist sentiments. And that's why he called it, at its heart, a religious war that's being fought out there for the very heart and soul of our nation. So this principle admitted that the student-led revolt may have been because the school decided to skip Memorial Day. <laughs> and so school officials issued apologies to the students, acknowledging the unintended mistake of, of not acknowledging Memorial Day observances. But this principal was very quick to lecture. Remember the virtue signalers? Very quick to lecture us, emphasizing that respect for Memorial Day and respect for the LGBTQ community are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> Who the hell are you to lecture us on that? Who the hell are you? the one who deliberately refused to honor those who gave their lives for our phobic, unjust, racist, sexist nation. You're the one who did that, not these students. Now, there's just, <laughs> I'm on fire today, again. I am fired up. There's just so much here. There's so much we can unpack and develop in terms of what's really going on here with these students students open revolt first and foremost you'll notice that this anti pride revolt is once again happening inside the world of the democrat left right this is not a revolt that's happening inside schools in tennessee or texas or florida or mississippi you know where all the knuckle draggers live this is so huge for us to get. The left is unraveling. Gang, I can't emphasize this enough to you, especially for you doomers and gloomers out there. Dang, get this. I know it's frustrating. I know. But gang, they've accumulated total power over every one of our cultural institutions. And it took them like 60, 70 years to do it. That power accumulated over decades, and it's not going to be rolled back overnight. But, but keep in mind, I mean, despite the disasters of Jimmy Carter and Hubert Humphrey and George McGovern, despite their own ridiculous setbacks like the 1994 Republican Revolution or the Reagan Revolution, whatever, despite their own personal setbacks, the cultural Marxist left remained undaunted and unfazed in their quest to seize control over every single cultural institution in our nation. And they did it. And they're not going to let go overnight. But they are unraveling. They are falling apart. Precisely because leftism is built on victimhood. And therefore entails its own futility. Because So if you belong to a victim group, you belong to the cultural Marxist left. Right. That's what they've convinced every victim group of. And so they've succeeded in amassing a coalition of groups whose only relation to each other is their shared identity of victimhood. But here's the problem. What happens when some of these groups achieve political and cultural power? What happens? What happens is they stop seeing themselves as victims. And they lose their common identity. And once they lose their common identity, these groups inevitably start turning on each other. And the whole thing unravels. Case in point, in a video I did yesterday, we talked about what happened this week in Hamtramck, Michigan, a city located just outside of Detroit. Now, Hamtramck is unique in that it's the first Muslim-majority city in the nation. 
And their status as the first Muslim majority city in the nation was solidified a few years back when voters there elected the first Muslim majority city council, who this week shocked woke leftists across the nation by being the first city to unanimously vote to officially ban the LGBT pride flag from being flown on any and all city property. It was a stunningly brazen move that has the woke left up in arms like never before. They simply cannot believe that any city council would have the goal to outright ban the flying of the pride flag. But what made it even worse is that this was a city council that was overwhelmingly Democrat. Hamtramck is part of Wayne County, Michigan, right? Which on average votes 70 percent. You heard that right. Seven out of 10 Democrat. Individual political contributions in Tramick are 10 to 1 Democrat. Democrats get over $100,000 in individual contributions, political contributions. Republicans are lucky if they break 10,000. Hamtramck is as Democrat of a city as you can get, and they just banned flying the LGBT rainbow flag. <laughs> now, if a Muslim majority could rise up, in one of the bluest of blue regions in the entire nation, and do that. What the hell is wrong with our feckless Republican politicians? Where are they showing a comparable level of political boldness in standing up for conservative values like Muslim Democrats are doing? I mean... <laughs> The good news, as you can see here as of today, gang, screw the Republicans. We don't need, we got middle schoolers and we got Muslim Democrats. <laughs> Who needs Republicans? These feckless donor class controlled rhinos. Who needs them? So that's the first takeaway from all this. The culture wars have gone way beyond red states versus blue states here. The culture wars have now entered inside the bluest of blue states, which signals that the left is unraveling. The left is now eating itself. The moment their various victim groups no longer see themselves as victims, they lose their common identity and they begin turning on each other. So hopefully that's going to embolden red states to rise up and act more in accordance with conservative values and openly champion those values, which, by the way, unite us all together as Americans, not victims. That's what makes conservatives different from liberals. Americans are united by a common national identity, not a common identity of victimhood. Rush Limbaugh always, 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 every day taught us that. We are united as Americans. We are not, that's why I love Trump. We're united as a nation as patriots, not as oppressed victims. It's our nation that unites us and sustains us as a flourishing civilization. All right.